Hey everybody, uh, we've been talking about friction. Uh, previous videos we're talking about two types of friction, a static friction or a kinetic friction. Uh, now if I did that graph, we had this force that went up and then it dropped down here. This was the peak of static friction. So the static friction operated equal and opposite, equal and opposite, because the object wasn't moving all the way up to here, equal and opposite, right? Uh, as far as my tension force versus my friction force. And once I overcame that peak static friction, drop down, and then it had this constant stat or kinetic friction. Once it gets moving, we've got this constant friction force. It doesn't increase or decrease after it starts moving, okay? Now, you're not gonna be able to pick up on this but I'm going to give you a couple scenarios to, to, to clarify. Um, we had this connection uh, between, um, I guess, when we did the lab, we changed the mass of the object, okay, which is our force of gravity, which also, if I did my free body diagram, normal force, I pulled with the tension, and I got this friction force, okay? Now that can be static or kinetic. The question that you're not gonna know what to ask is, which one impacts the force of friction? Tension doesn't necessarily impact the force of friction, although, right, it does increase, etc. But it's really that surface, the property of the surface that made a difference. Now the question is, which one is it? Is it the force of gravity that impacts friction? or is it the normal force, okay? Now, I know there are some truck drivers here as far as they've got um, their truck, not four-wheel drive. If it's a two-wheel drive, it's usually driven by the back wheels. Um, on a wintry day, if you guys know of someone who has just the two-wheel drive, uh, back wheels driving the motion, you know because it's not, those wheels are not underneath the engine they need to add mass, they'll put sandbags in the back of their truck, okay? What they're doing is they're changing the normal force, right? They haven't added any mass to the tire or to the truck itself as far as that friction force. They're trying to add more friction by adding normal force. Um, the other thing is, I'm not, gonna sh I'm not sure if you're gonna hear the sound, so I might try to get it closer to the computer. If I slide these back and forth, there's friction between them and there's a normal force, so I'm trying to just move the top one. If I press down, can you hear the difference? The mass of the objects haven't changed, but the normal force has between them because I put more mass or more force on there. So I'm increasing the normal force, and normal force and force of friction are the ones that are related, okay? So that's what I want to clarify. Now, what I'm gonna do now it is go to your data uh, because I collected all your data. Not sure you're going to love that, okay? Well, of course you are because we're data nerds now, okay? What I did is from each one of your assignments uh, or your data, I collected that peak static friction and then I connect, collected uh, your uh, kinetic friction force that caused it to move or once it started moving. Now the data is right here. I'm going to expand that, okay? I uh, so what I did uh, is I graphed I graphed and I'll show you this again. Uh, I did kinetic friction and I did static friction and I graphed the normal force, right? Let me show you, right? Oops, I didn't need calculator. I graphed, I'm going to delete that. I graphed the normal first force versus uh, basically this is kinetic, uh, kinetic friction force and I inserted a graph, right? And it came up linear, which is cool. And then I'm gonna quick change the format and it gives me a slope. Now that's really tiny, probably hard for you to read. Um, but the cool part is each time I graph normal force versus the kinetic friction force, I got a linear relationship. So if I started with 100 grams versus 2,000 grams, right, I got this data. For each one that was aluminum on steel, glass on glass, graphite on graphite, 
I could even do that. I don't have much data for that, but I can insert a graph for that also. And it should give us, yeah, something nice and linear. And so I'll go and get that data. And you can see that slope, right, is the relationship between normal force, friction force. And if I go over to static, same thing. Uh, I have the slope that relates static friction to normal force, okay? So I'm going to pause my video. I'm going to erase that whiteboard. And then we're going to look at our different um, slopes, OK? Now, boom, my whiteboard changed, OK? My whiteboard changed. Now, we got linear results for different surfaces for static friction to force normal. And this little fishy says the static friction is proportional to or directly proportional to force normal. Straight line. Now this slope we call the coefficient of friction. And we give it this funny letter. called mu, and we'll do mu s for static friction. And that means force of kinetic friction, mu of k, times force normal. That slope, right, that slope that we got for aluminum on steel, right, was different for static and kinetic, and I'll actually list those right now. My static friction aluminum on steel was 0 0.33. My kinetic friction ratio was 0 0.25. So the ratio of static friction force to normal force was 0.33, right? It gave us that linear relationship. Kinetic friction to normal, that slope is 0.25. Glass on glass, I don't know if you guys remember that, had large forces related to it. But you can see the static friction, that slope, was greater than the slope of the kinetic friction versus normal force. Rubber on ice is very slick, right, 0 0.075. And then wood on table, 0 0.77 and 0 0.56. So all those slopes, all I've done is listed the slope when I had static friction and normal friction for aluminum on steel data was 0.33. And kinetic friction was 0.25 was that slope between kinetic friction and the normal force when we were aluminum steel. So again, what that gives us, right, is this force of friction is equal to this coefficient of friction. Is it static? Is it stationary? Or is it moving kinetic? You have to decide times your force normal. Okay. So working with friction and gathering that data we knew the surface mattered as far as what force would get that object to move. We looked at um, the force. There was a force that kept it stationary. And then once you exceeded that force, you got it moving, that friction, kinetic friction force. Ultimately, all that work is to get us to this equation to relate normal force with friction force is dependent on the surface type and whether it's stationary or moving. And that little mu, funny little letter, is called the coefficient of friction. Okay. All right, I hope that helped you guys understand friction force better.